Today's video is on adding and subtracting fractions. And this is a topic that, again, we've spent time on before, but we're going to be adding some extra stuff to it that you haven't probably seen before. So please make sure that you keep watching and wait for when we get to the stuff that's new. Our learning target is just I can add and subtract fractions. Please write what you already know about this. You've done this before, but you may have not done it with negatives or with some of the other things we'll be working with today. So write what you do know. Write down the date you're watching this, and then there is again no vocabulary today. We're going to start with looking at proper fractions. Okay. So with proper fractions, they're going to look like this. We might have 5 over 21 plus 2 over 21. If we have that, well, all we're going to do is 5 over 21 plus 2 over 21. All we have to do is add the tops together because we already have a common denominator, which is really, really important. But 21 is the denominator for both of these, so we can do 5 over 21 plus 2 over 1. Adding the tops, 5 plus 2 is 7 over 21. Always when we're working with fractions, we have to simplify them before we give our final answer. And when you're reading an assignment and you're looking at the directions, it's not always going to say to simplify because this is just expected. It's like when you write a paper and your teacher's not going to say every time, make sure you use periods. It's expected. It's part of the assignment. In this case, in math, simplifying fractions is expected. It's part of the assignment. So here I see that both top and bottom can be divided by 7. 7 divided by 7 is 1, 21 divided by 7 is 3, and so my answer is 1 third. Now, if we run into a fraction that is subtraction, so let's say here we have 3 tenths minus 7 tenths. Now, right away, I see 3 minus 7. I know this is going to be a negative number. So just like when we were working with integers, we can actually turn this into adding a negative number. Okay, and that's always going to work with this as well. We can rewrite subtraction as adding the opposite. And especially when we're going to be dealing with negatives, that's going to make our lives a lot, lot easier. In this case, I would have 3 plus negative 7. Well, that's negative 4. And then the bottom is still 10. Again, I can simplify. Both of these are divisible by 2. That leaves me with negative 2, 5. And that is my answer. Now, they're not always going to be this simple, of course. Sometimes you might have ones that are mixed numbers. For example, we could have negative 4 and 9 fourteenths plus 3 and 5 fourteenths. And the rule that we're going to be using for these is just to always turn them improper. And there's several reasons for that. But the main one is that, especially when we're working with numbers that can be negative, it's going to make our lives a lot easier if that we're always working with improper numbers. So here I have negative 4 and 9 fourteenths. I want to turn that improper. To do that, I'll say, okay, negative 4. So 4 times 14 plus 9. When I do that, I get. 65, and then my bottom is still 14, and this is still a negative number. Then I have plus 3 times 14 plus 5 goes on the top, that 47 over 14. So to solve this now, I have negative 65 plus 47 on the top and the bottom is just 14. So I can use what I know about adding integers to add negative 65 plus 47. I have 65 negatives and 47 positives. I have more negative than positives, so I know my answer will be negative. And I have 18 more negatives if we cancel them out, and then 14 on the bottom. I see that this is immediately divisible by 2 to simplify it. 
solve negative 9 over 7. And now the other thing that I can do is now that this is in simplified form, I'm going to, for my final step, turn this back into a mixed number. Right now it's an improper fraction because 9 is bigger than 7. So this will be negative. 7 goes into 9 once. And there's two sevenths left over. So that is how we work with mixed numbers. Okay? Another example here. Let's say we have two and seven ninths minus ninths. Just like before, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn these improper. Okay, this is going to give me 25 over 9 minus 8 over 9. All right. I could rewrite this as adding the opposite, 25 plus negative 8, or I can just do 25 minus 8. That gives me 17 over 9. There's nothing that goes into both 17 and 9, but I can't rewrite this as a mixed number. 9 goes into 17 one time, and there's 8 left over. So my answer is 1 and 8 ninths. Now, as I said before, things can get a little bit more complicated as we are starting to work with variables and things like that. Okay? So... The next type of problem we might have could actually include variables. And this would look like this. 12 over A plus 3 over A. Now, my first instinct when I see the A is to start panicking. I don't know how to work with A's in adding fractions. But when I look at this, I realize that the A's are both on the bottom. And that means I already have a common denominator. So since I have a common denominator, all I have to worry about is the top. So I'll do the 12 plus 3, and then the A on the denominator stays the same. 12 plus 3, that gives me 15 over A. I don't know what A is, so I can't simplify this. So that's it. And that is my answer. So let's try another one. We're going to do 5A over 2B. Minus A over 2B. Okay? See if you can solve this one on your own, pausing the video, and then restart the video when you're ready to see if you got it right. For this one to solve it, I see that 2B is my denominator, and that's a common denominator, so I don't have to do anything. On the top, then, I'm doing 5A minus A. Well, if I have 5As and I subtract an A, that leaves me with 4A and 2B. This time, however, I say that even though I don't know what A and B are, I know that 4 and 2 can both be divided by the same number. This is just like in the simplifying fractions video earlier this week. So I can divide both 4 and 2 by 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2, so that leaves me with 2A. 2 divided by 2 is 1 which I don't need to write because 1B and B are the same thing. So I can actually just write 2A over B. 1B or just B would be the same thing. Either way, that's my answer. The last thing to be careful of while you're doing this is that you always need to make sure you have a common denominator. And if you don't have a common denominator, you need to find one. So say, for example, if you were to ask to do 5 ninths plus 1 sixth. 9 and 6 are not the same, so we need to find a common denominator for ninths and sixths. That means I need to find a number that both 9 and 6 go into. And this is review. This part here, this is review. We've done this before. 9 and 6 both go into 18. So I'm going to say, okay, 9 times 2 is 18, so I'll do 10, 5 times 2. That gives me 10 eighteenths. Plus, 6 times 3 is 18, so I'll do 1 times 3. That gives me 3 eighteenths. All I've done here is find a 
common denominator. Now I can add 10 plus 3, that's 13, over 18. The same is true if we have mixed numbers with that don't have a common denominator. So I want to do one example of that as well, because those have a few steps. So let's say we have 4 and 5 eighths minus 2 and 2 thirds. When I see a problem with mixed numbers, the first thing I'm always going to do is turn them improper. Again, you may have learned other ways in the past, but because that we can now have positives and negatives, it's way easier in this case to turn them all improper. So in this case, 8 times 4 is 32, plus 5 is 37 over 8, minus 2 times 3 is 6, plus 2 is 8 over 3. Remember, this is just how I'm turning my improper fractions, or my mixed numbers into improper fractions. Now that I've turned them improper, now I need to find a common denominator. Here I have 8 and 3, so I need a common denominator for 8 and 3. I know that 8 and 3 both go into 24, so I'm going to use that. 8 times 3 is 24, so I need to do 37 times 3. I can do that on a calculator or I can work that out by hand. Either way, when I do that, I get 111. Then for turning 8 thirds into 24, so we'll read times 8. So I'll do 8 times 8 and I, I get 64. 111 24 minus 64 24. That's going to give me 47 over 24. Now I want to turn my answer back into a mixed number because I see that there's nothing that goes into both 47 and 24. I don't have any simplifying that I need to do. I just want to turn this back into a mixed number. 24 goes into 47 one time. And I'm left with 23. 47 minus 24 is 23. So I have 1 and 23. 24. Now there was a lot going on in this video. So if there's something that you're confused about, please, please, please re-watch parts of the video or contact me and let me know. Thank you so much and have a great day.